truly extraordinary day with the Prince, as we heard, making statements that were high on emotion and at times short on actual facts. Joining me to discuss this in detail is my favourite lady in LA, Royal commentator and podcaster Kinsey Schofield and Talk TV's Royal editor Sarah Hewson. Ladies, welcome. Um, I might surprise you a little bit this evening by, by starting in a different way. Today was high on emotion. We've talked about some of the facts were, at best, inaccurate. Um, I just today felt that this man, you could see that there was genuine pain and hurt. And at times growing up, the level of scrutiny was overwhelming. That does not in any way uh, get over the fact that they have talked about privacy and then have gone and sold their souls. But there, there seemed to be today... Um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a momentous moment, but I, I'm not saying I felt sorry for him but I saw another side, and then I'm looking at that, and then I think to myself, this is more than about Prince Harry. This is about the royal family and its very existence, and that soap opera that is the monarchy on a daily basis is right front and centre. Let's start with you, Sarah, if we can. How did you... You've watched this all day. How did you feel he came across in court today? What's your gut feeling? Well, I think... Prince Harry's legal team came away pretty happy uh, today, Jeremy, with how he conducted himself in court. This was very different to facing questioning from Oprah Winfrey or, or Tom Bradby. He had no control over the narrative. It was forensic uh, questioning. He maintained his cool. He was calm uh, throughout. He answered the questions. He didn't give too much information. When he couldn't answer the question, he said, you'll have to ask my legal team, or he repeated on multiple occasions you'll have to ask uh, the journalists who wrote the story. Uh, the level, the degree of questioning from Andrew Green, uh, Casey, was very forensic, mm. very detailed, but it was always polite as well. And I think when you talked about a sense of sympathy that you came away with, that was the case being put by the, key, the KC for the Mirror Group newspapers. Look, everybody, he said he is sure, must feel a degree of sympathy for you, Prince mm. Harry, having lived through the level of media intrusion that you have and the impact that has had on your life. But what that media intrusion doesn't necessarily equate to is unlawful activity. And what this case has to do is prove that there was illegal, unlawful Absol activity in order to, in to uh, get those articles and to put them in the press. Absolutely. And what I've always tried to do genuinely on this show, JK Live, is to look at both sides. So having said what I, I, I truly felt to a degree, you know, you lose your mother, that goldfish bowl is overwhelming. I've also sat here, Kinsey, every night and said, I and, it, and people can get my quote, I respected him and Meghan when they said, we don't want to be in that goldfish bowl anymore. Look what it's done to other people. We're going to go to California. But I also then add into the mix, you can't cry for privacy right? You cannot, and then sell your soul. And a lot of people contacting this station tonight, and I completely get it, are saying, so let me get this right, Jez, the privileged prince, right, unelected and having made millions, right, takes it upon himself to disrespect the entire British free press and even attack an elected British government. That is an example of ludicrous, and a ludicrous approach, isn't it? I mean, the first word I thought of when I when I saw this was delusional. You know, how how delusional are you to to not only blame the entire media industry, but the government? Uh, it just feels like, well, that escalated quickly. Um, but I, I do think that this is bigger to Prince Harry. And and again, with the delusional, although I don't know how well his, his family will come out of this, mm. I do believe that he thinks that he is doing this for not only the memory of his mother, but the future of the royal family. I, I, he wants to change the way that the British media works. And, um, you know, I think he thinks he, he's doing it for a bigger cause than himself. I mean, I think that's absolutely right. And, and much as I, you know... I could sit here to both of you and say, looking back, could the royal household have seen the signs of a young man struggling in that goldfish bowl, struggling? Some of the instances in court today were very interesting because he was quoting, you know, what he perceived to be the press having a go at him. And they were saying, well, hold on a second, that's come out of statements from not only another newspaper, but maybe even the royal household itself. Can I just... I just want to 
read a few quotes, if I can, for you both. Um, he said, interestingly today, Sarah, he played up to some of the headlines because he might as well do the crime. As a teenager, and I quote, and in my early 20s, I ended up feeling as though I was playing up to a lot of the headlines and stereotypes that they wanted to pin on me, mainly because I thought that if they're printing this rubbish about me and people were believing it, I might as well do the crime, so to speak. It was a downward spiral whereby the tabloids would constantly try and coax me, a damaged young man, into doing something stupid that would make a good story and sell lots of newspapers. I'll give you what I think, Sarah. Um, I can talk about could his family have done more, and I can talk about the fact that I have a degree of sympathy, but blaming the media for his reputation as a thicker or a playboy prince doesn't bear scrutiny. Nobody, nobody forced him to take cocaine or LSD. Nobody forced him to play around with a string of young women. And nobody forced him, did they, Sarah Houston, to wear a Nazi uniform? That's ridiculous. No, and the Nazi uniform was one of the most interesting uh, pieces of evidence we heard today, uh, Jeremy, and just how that was handled. You talked about the support he'd received from within the royal family. Well, we learned a little bit about how his father responded uh, to that incident, that Harry was grounded, that he was forced to take a job working on the Highgrove farm. He was mucking out pigsties on the farm, and his father was extremely disappointed by his error of judgment. But on other incidents where Prince Harry had clashed with a paparazzi photographer, for example, his father had expressed sympathy and understanding for him. But yes, I think what you get, the impression that you come away with after today's evidence, and of course we've got another half day from Prince Harry to come, is a man who was very much struggling, a boy, a young man, uh, now a husband and father, struggling with his position in the public eye, struggling with the way in which he was portrayed in the media. And what this court now has to decide, and the judge has to decide, is whether this is about Harry wanting revenge for what he sees as excess media intrusion or whether there was illegality at play. The interesting thing is, you know, and, and, and there's so much I could say, you know, he, he said that, you know, I, I lost my circle of friends. I can tell you categorically there was a certain nightclub in London, right, owned by a good friend of his, that he would come out the front door and the paparazzi would take a picture and that would get in the newspapers. You can't have it almost both ways. Can I just uh, read this to you, Kinsey? Whenever I got into a relationship, said Harry, they were very keen to report the details but would then very quickly seek to try and break it up by putting as much strain on it and creating as much distrust as humanely possible. This twisted objective is still pursued to this day, even though I'm now married. My answer to that is, I'm not condoning in any way, but you are in the public eye. There is a degree of control, and your behaviour sums up how you are portrayed, I think. And, and I go back to what I said at the beginning. Go to California with Meghan and stay there. Don't write a book and don't do a Netflix series because you are inviting in the very thing that you are saying that destroyed your bloody life. That's the point, right? I, I, I don't, you know, I, I read that statement and I think you, know, you people do, you're introduced to the world, there's enthusiasm, but a journalist's job is to then go look into that person and report on that person's history, their family, because that's what, you know, that's what people are curious about. And these are, you know, Harry is going to be a historic figure in history books 200, 300 years from now. It's different from for him. Um, but I don't believe anyone wants him and Meghan Markle to break up, to divorce. I don't think any of us have that desire or, you know, are, are pursuing something to see that happen. That's just not realistic. I don't think anybody is is that hateful or uh, it, it's just almost silly to suggest that, that there's an ulterior motive here in the coverage to break up his marriage. I think I think there's a real dichotomy and I think I think the issue here is, you know, it's even more so now the scrutiny because they've moved away from being working royals to becoming celebrities. I'm I, I sort of mix between victim slash instigator but I go back to what I've said ladies throughout the whole thing which is I'm not altogether sure whether he's badly advised or thinks he's on a mission but the minute you start criticizing an elected government the minute you feel that it's your right to take on the British press I think you're on very dodgy ground I think some of what he said was salient but I just think his overall behavior and a lot of people have said to me and I just want to say this before we go to a break you know we worry about his mental health, which goes back again in the world we live in, and that's absolutely spot on. It goes back again to the very beginning of how we started this part. 
Stay in California. If you know this trauma, if you know this world, this press, this bubble has destroyed relationships, destroyed your mother, destroyed your family, why put yourself through that? What do you think you are, a, a paragon of virtue? I don't know. Yes, he's made mistakes. Yes, he was born. Some would say in a bubble. Others would say in a really, really privileged position. Ladies, thank you so, so much.